morning. Um, two nights ago, the Lord spoke to me through the entire night. Uh, it, was, it was hard to get rest that night. Um, he just kept waking me and telling me um, of something to tell you. And he said, tell them about the connection of Noah and the ark and my salvation, my Yeshua. Show them all those things because they're so exciting. And I was like, oh yeah, that's a great, great idea. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna show them. And I woke up and I thought, uh, what was I supposed to show them? Yeah, so I, I really prayed about it through the day because I didn't write it down. Okay, write down. When the Lord wakes you, just, just keep it a notepad and a pen by your bed and just write it down. It'll save you a lot of grief and you'll really get some good sleep. But uh, he just kept telling me all through the night because I never wrote it down. So I prayed all about it yesterday. I thought, my Lord, what do you want me to tell them? You know? And uh, then last night he made it clear uh, before bed. He said, just tell them about the ark and my salvation which is Yah's salvation, which is Yah-shua. And I went, oh yeah, okay, I will do that. <laughs> so I started writing things down, and um, I, I know he wants this clear, and he wants us hungry for it because of what Yeshua said in Luke. And it's in Luke 17, 22 through... 27. So I'll read it to you real fast. It says, And he said to the disciples, The day shall come when you will long to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and you will not see it. And they will say to you, Look there, look here. Do not go away and do not run after them. For just as the lightning, when it flashes out of one part of the sky, shines to another part of the sky, so will the Son of Man be in his day. But first, he must suffer many things and be rejected by this generation. And just as it happened in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the Son of Man. They were eating, they were drinking, they were marrying, they were being given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Okay, so <clears throat> keep that passage in mind. As um, I'm going to tell you, um, the Lord brought um, into my mind rather quickly um, eight connections between the Ark of Noah and Yeshua, the Ark of Noah and the Tabernacle, and the Ark and the Restoration to the Kingdom. And I would venture to say to you that Yeshua, of course, is Yah's salvation, um, and he is a picture of the Tabernacle, and he is our Restoration to the Kingdom. So this is about Yeshua. So get your pen ready, get your paper ready. Um, there are eight, eight things, eight connections. Okay, so first in Genesis 6, 8, it talks about the eyes of God. Um, this is number one, the eyes of God. Noah found favor in the eyes of God. And I had alluded to this to another in another um, uh, online video. But the eyes in Hebrew uh, means spring or a fountain or a water well. And his eyes, Adonai's eyes, can offer springs of refreshment or floods of judgment. So the protection of Noah also. Um, that is covered, um, he was covered in, the ark was covered in pitch. Okay, now the root of pitch and cover is kafar, kafar, and that is the root of kapur, um, where we get Yom Kippur, Day of Atonement, and that means to cover, forgive, reconcile, pardon, clothed in righteousness. 
So Noah and his family, his three sons um, and their wives and Noah's wife, and of course the animals that, that the Lord brought in, were placed in a box that's used in funerals. Okay, you have to think of this as our shell, okay? But one that is resistant to decay and disease. Um, and so we're kind of like this empty shell that, that houses the Holy Spirit of God. So they were floating in this box covered with his required covering and they hovered over the face of the waters. Okay, you see that in the beginning and Jesus walked on water because so there's something to it. Um, waters, if you look through the scriptures, a lot of times that is just a picture of the world, the field, the world, the nations, okay? Um, and we're being separated from that, made holy. Okay, so Adonai separated, made holy Noah from the outside world with his protection from judgment. So the eyes of judgment filled the earth with a complete death, burial, and resurrection, a baptism to place new life upon his creation. Okay, number two, the dimensions of the ark and the picture of loving kindness. I also had alluded to this too in another video. Um, talking about the cubits. A cubit is a length of a mother's arm. That's what it means. It's, it's length of an arm, but it's really the length of a mother's arm. And it points to El Shaddai. Um, because El Shaddai is um, literally the large-breasted one, the one who holds, uh, who has a chest large enough to hold all of her children and protect them. So, and hold them just as a mother does. So this is a picture of El Shaddai. Um, the length was 300 cubits. Um, 300, that number is represented by the letter Sheen. Letters mean things in Hebrew. So Sheen, and that means, that is literally like teeth and it's tearing apart, setting apart. Um, making separate, separating out like you would tearing off a piece of meat, separating. And of course, Sheen is short for El Shaddai. Okay, the breadth was 50 cubits and that uh, 50 is represented by the letter Noon. And Noon um, means uh, air, a sun, life, um, the pictorial representation of it initially where it first got was a sperm. So this is life. So we have 50 cubits life. And then the height is 30 cubits. And that is uh, represented of the letter Lamed. And that is actually like a shape of a staff, a shepherd's staff. So you have a staff or a shepherd of protection. So we have El Shaddai, the large breasted one large chest to hold all of her children, is holding the separated, holy life or child, children, and she is protecting them by the staff, by her staff. So not to say that God is a woman, okay? It's just that is a feminine noun, and it's the, it's the feminine attributes of God. I mean, we are made in his image, man and woman. Okay, number three, the window. This is verse, um, chapter six, verse 16. Make a window a source of light. Okay, um, this is representative of the, the area of the Holy of Holies in the tabernacle. So in the Holy of Holies, there was only one light source, and that was the presence of Elohim, of Adonai himself. That was the only light source there was. I mean, he was the pillar of, of fire there um, so there was only one source of light and of course there was only one source of light in the ark and that was this window 
It was one source of vision. It was where he could look out. So one source of vision, connection. Um, and it is a set apart, an intimate area. And it's intimate for the ones that are set apart and holy. Okay, number four, the door. This is awesome. Okay, chapter 7, verse 16. The Lord closed the door. Yeshua is the door. He said, I am the door. I am the gate. I am the way. The way to salvation. The way of salvation. I am salvation. This is Yah's salvation, Yahshua. The door was on the side of Of the ark and it was opened for entry to protect life Yeshua's side was opened with a sword and it brought forth blood and water as a drink offering if you will poured out just like a drink offering John 7 all who trusted in this opening received life and we're, we're part of that life. They have life. They walk as life. It was closed by Adonai, not by Noah. It was closed by Adonai. So just as with Adam, the side, just as with Adam, his side was opened to bring forth new life and then closed by Adonai. So too is Yeshua. His body was resurrected and the new Adam, a resurrected groom, this is important, now the groom brings forth new life through his bride. Adonai brought new life from Adam. Okay. Eve, in order to go forth and multiply. He had to separate them in order to bear fruit and to place them as one again to bear fruit. Okay, so um, now with Yeshua, the second Adam, Adonai brings forth new life through the womb of his bride. Life was protected in the ark. Adonai brought forth this new life in Noah, which his name means rest, and his seed um, took this forth, took forth new life in, all over the world. When he rested the ark on Mount Ararat, this took place. And the name of Ararat means the curse is reversed. This is a picture of our Yeshua, our salvation. And a picture of the millennial reign, the thousand year reign. New life after judgment of the world. And also, Noah was 600 years old when this flood took place. He was 601 at the end. So, this is also a picture of the 6,000 years. And then the 7,000th millennial reign. That thousand year reign. Of Messiah. Messiah Yeshua salvation. Okay. Number five, the levels, the levels of the ark. So you have a lower and a middle and a third deck. And, um, this is in chapter six, verse 16. So you have a lower area and that actually means pit or womb. And there's a middle area, which means to fold. So it's like a picture of protection. And then the third area uh, is like a triangle. It means triangle or um, a triune. 
So with the lower level, um, which means womb or birth of new life, this is the first step. It, I want you to think about the tabernacle, okay? So in a tabernacle level, you have the lower outer courts or the where you initially come in, okay? And this is where the gate is. Remember, the, the, the door was on the side, okay? So this is where the gate is. So you have this lower area where you first step toward new life. And this held the altar, um, which is confession and payment of sin. And it also housed the laver, where the mixture of blood and water took place. I mean, after you sacrificed, then the priest washed off the blood in this continuous flowing water, continuous flowing water. So a mixture of blood and water. Um, and then now they were clean. And, and now whoever goes into this area, uh, they're clean. The priest is, is helping with the sacrifice and the person is considered clean. Okay, and so we had animals actually living in this lower part, um, clean and unclean. So there's a picture of that. And the middle part, um, think about the tabernacle. That's where the priests worked. Um, they, they ministered there all day. So they had the menorah and they had um, the uh, table of showbread and then they had the altar of incense. So there was ministry going in all the time. And this was also the area where uh, it's believed that Noah and his family lived. They lived in this middle area, kind of a protective area. And then the third area is the intimate area. It's the Holy of Holies. Um, it's the window of communication to the Lord, the source of light. Um, it's where we open, where Adonai has opened the communication with us. It's just this intimate place, this place of vision. So, um, number six, the reign of 40 days and 40 nights. Okay, this is chapter 7, verse 12. 40 is the number for judgment or trial or chastisement. So um, that's how long the reign took place. It was a picture of trial and chastisement. Um, just like the Israelites, 40 years in the desert, those who doubted did not go in to the promised land. Only their children, we have the eyes of a child, only their children remained and entered into this new promised life. Number seven, dove and raven. Okay, this is found in chapter eight. The raven is an unclean bird. It's a scavenger. Um, it goes to and fro, and even the scripture said that, that the raven went to and fro and never, never landed. Satan, um, that's a picture of him. He roams to and fro, going to and fro, no rest. The dove is a clean bird. And this is like a picture of the bride. And she's finding rest. She sees the rest, she's finding rest. She's bringing back an olive branch. And of course, I believe this is a picture of the engrafting in, Romans 11, of the olive, olive branch. Finding rest in a renewed land. And she remains there. It's a picture of the millennial reign. And then finally, eight, the rainbow. This is chapter nine. And of course, this is the renewed covenant, never to destroy the earth by water again. Now, through Yeshua, we have life through living water, living water, streams of living water. And the bow, okay, the bow, if you, if you look at a rainbow, it's actually pointing an arrow up, okay? The bow is like an arrow's bow pointing the arrow toward Adonai, reminding him. Every time he sees it, he's going to be reminded. And he is faithful, and he will remember his promise. May we live as holy 
as his set apart people given new life because we happened to trust the door and we entered in and he protected us and gave us his atonement and now we have rest and we can walk in this new life as set apart and holy to point all back to his kingdom, his kingdom living. This is your salvation. You have been chosen, set apart. This is your salvation. We are to be holy as he is holy. We have been set apart now to live it. May the Lord bless you. I pray this please the Father um, in telling you these things. May his name be praised and glorified. Y'all have a great day.